probably the best thing they've added to a game in a long, long time. What's on guys? Jehoi back with you today. Welcome back to the world of NHL where we have our first look at NHL 23. We have the official gameplay trailer with you. If I had a better computer, we'd watch it together. But until then, we're going to go over, I guess it's five. There's kind of like six big things that they kind of covered in this video that I want to go over. So we're probably going to throw some screenshots up so you guys can kind of just get a little bit of a picture, a little bit of a change of pace. So that way you guys can see what's going on. So let's start with the first thing that they talked about in this video. This is from the official uh, EA Sports NHL YouTube channel. That's where I got this video from. That's where I got the video idea from. And that's going to be last chance puck movements. Now what this means is if you remember when you were playing and those stupid little like like baby bumps almost that you just barely push the guy, you lose the puck and then you try to get it back and most likely take a penalty, which is you know something I usually did. But now they changed that a little bit. So now they have what's called last chance puck movement. So what that means is you can double tap a button. They didn't really tell you what button, but they said double tap a button and you can last chance uh, puck movement. So you can kind of send it around the boards, you can shoot it, uh, you can do it while in the shooting animation, you can kind of do it um, in, a, in a lot of different situations on offense. Well, they thought about what the first thing I would say that you could do that on offense, but what about defense? You can do it on defense as well. So when you're clearing the puck, you have that last chance movement ability, and uh, I don't know what button it is or how to do it, but they at least uh, brought it in. So again, it helps with the the baby bumps that I'll call it that you always got and you lost the puck. And in the video, it actually shows some pretty good examples of it. And as far as you know, the pace of play of the game and, and the fluidity of the game itself, it should definitely help with all of that. So it's definitely gonna help with puck interceptions, with defense, with offense. It should create a really good, solid gameplay all throughout. So I wanna add one more thing on top of this. So they actually said in the video that you can double tap, shoot or pass. Now, when trying to do that, when you play with like the skill stick or something, I don't know how that's gonna work. Like do you put the right stick forward a couple of times or if you're playing, um, what is, I don't know what it's, is it called hybrid or like the classic controls with like B and A? I feel like that would almost be a little easier to double tap, but, or like do you right stick click in or, or I don't know how to do it exactly yet, but it should create for a lot better play through the entire game. So the only kind of one worry that after watching the video a few times and hearing it and kind of watching what uh, you know, they're saying as far as uh, the whole video goes, there's a couple of worries that that I have. And that's that, okay, you can now do this last chance puck movement stuff, but if you're in the process of being hit and you can shoot it with this new ability, I'll call it, does that make your play? Like if you have Alexander Ovechkin, obviously one of the best shooters probably of all time, is his like shooting stats like decreased since he's kind of like off balance or is passing a little bit off like, or a little bit reduced, you know, depending on what animation you get. Like, do you get affected stats wise by getting hit or interfered with or, or whatever when you go to shoot or when you go to the last chance puck movement completely, are your stats reduced in that situation when you're getting pushed, when you're shooting it? Because if you're the same like sats and everything as just standing at the blue line, or not the blue line, but like standing in the slot and just taking a free open shot compared to getting pushed over, like you shouldn't have the same stats there. So I wonder if there's something like that. I didn't see it anywhere in the video. I watched a couple times again and it just, it doesn't seem like there is anything. So maybe there is, maybe there isn't. 
So our next thing that they talk about in this deep dive is the ch is there's big changes coming to strategies, mainly talking about power play and penalty kill. So what they've done, if you've watched the NHL or basically any professional hockey team, they have the 1-3-1 one, one power play. Now what that is, you usually have a defenseman at the blue line, you have two guys out on the wings, you have a guy kind of like in the middle of the hash marks, and then you have a guy kind of screening the goalie, kind of moving in and out of that area, in like the, the trapezoid behind the net, but like in front, if you will, like in that general area. So they added some new stuff to that. Along with the penalty kill, they made the one, or is it the 1-1-2 one, one, or the... The triangle plus one, or like they say a few different names in there, but basically where you have your two defensemen guarding, I guess, at the posts, um, but obviously out from the goalie, the guy kind of watching the guy in the hash marks, and then the one guy kind of skating around the outside. So you have a new strategy, which they should have done forever ago now. Then you have the counterattack to that with the new penalty kill strategy. Okay, great. Well, they took that one step further. And this is probably the best thing they've added to the game in a long, long time. Where before, like once you're in the edit line screen, whenever you saw, okay, this is your on your power play, it gives you three forward positions and two defensive positions. Well, if you're like me and use the umbrella and try to have four forwards and one defenseman out there, and tried to set up like the 1-3-1, one, one. it never really worked how you thought. Where sometimes if you put your defenseman, say you have, I don't know, like, like Kale McCarr or something, like one of the one of the best like power play quarterbacks in the league, you have him, since he's a right defenseman, you have him as right defense, right? Then you have, I don't know, another guy that's on, let's say Nathan McKinnon is over, you want over at like the, the left circle there for that one-timer spot. And then on the other side, well, then you put McKinnon as like the left defense, if you will. And then you have, let's just say, Rantanen as your guy that you want in the other circle, your right circle. You'd put him as right wing and then have the center and the left wing as two like, who knows where they actually go. Like there was sometimes they were in front of the net, sometimes they were just kind of hanging out. Like it didn't really seem very good. So, you know, you try to change that and try to, you know, set up the one three one and do what you're doing now, but with the old system. So now I'm glad you can actually set where to put each player. So you can put who you want as the quarterback, who you well at the, the defenseman at the blue line. You can pick who you want on the left side. You can pick who you want on the right side. You can pick who you want taking the face off, who's standing in front of the net, uh, who's that bumper person. Like there's a lot more customization to the power play strategies and penalty kill strategies. So you can pick the same thing for a penalty kill. You can pick who is like that middle guy, who is the guy skating around the outside. So absolutely massive changes to the power play, to the penalty kill strategies. And it's one of the best updates they've done in a long time. One of the other things they did as far as strategies go is they put in what they're calling assisted strategy. So in this case, they're gonna have like a little suggestion box up in like the bottom right, bottom left, I'm not sure. But they're gonna have like, oh, you know, uh, you're, since you're down by a goal with seven minutes left in the third period, how would you try to push for some offense or something? Or if you're up by a goal or two, with seven minutes left in the third period, oh, maybe play lockdown defense. Or in the cases that, you need, that they think you should pull your goalie, that pops up down there. I'm not exactly sure how many um, assisted strategies are down there, but usually you try to play a little bit more aggressive if you are down, try to switch your guys up to more aggressive and everything, or aggressive and full attack, or you know whatever it's called. Like usually you already did that, but now they have the assisted strategy, so that will help you. So you can kind of accept it or decline it, Whatever you want to do, it's there as an option. So they also made some new changes to X factors. So they added in a couple of new ones for a few different players. Um, it's called It's Tricky or something with Trevor Zegris. Congrats on the cover, by the way. And for Sarah Nurse, congrats on the cover, by the way, uh, for a couple of their abilities. So they changed a couple of those. They've edited some of the other ones to try to make them a little bit more balanced, a little bit more used. 
a little bit more user friendly and try to get people to use them more. So a little bit of changes to X factors. I still hate X factors, but they made some changes to them. So we'll see how they turn out. So of course, as they do every single year, they've updated the goalie artificial intelligence, the AI, the tracking, the, all the other things they say every year for EA. So they added all that to goalies. They made them smarter or something. But again, they say that every single year and they still always are basically clueless. But the next thing is a couple of uh, interesting added little touches that they did that you probably won't even notice after the first month. But in cases where you're watching a game, sometimes players that are stuck, um, you know, being cut off by a player, they'll point their stick in an area where there's an open player, where the player carrying the puck may not see them. So they added something in the game where they kind of point up the ice or point to an area where that player is open. So a little bit of an interesting touch. They did the same thing for when you go to line changes. They actually put their stick up in the air to kind of signal that they are going off the ice. So I know everyone's felt this pain of you go to pass it to a guy and he's in the, well, he goes to skate by the bench and he looks like he's going on a good rush and then he just gets off. Everyone's experienced that. Everyone hates it. But hopefully this helps with a little bit of added visuals that these players are doing these certain things. So they've made a lot of changes as far as community feedback as well. So apparently people were talking about um, poke checks, how you can still skate almost full speed when doing the poke check defensive skill stick animation. They've also made updates to pass assist and passing in general it seems like. So apparently it's more fluid once you receive passes and once you pass the puck and a lot of other changes with passing in general as far as the animations and everything go. So looks to be a lot of improvements, but let's keep going. They've also made some changes as far as defense goes. They've updated how interceptions work. So again, one of those feelings that you feel like you're in the perfect position to stop that pass or you're backtracking on a back check and you feel like you're in the perfect position to stop the play and just no matter what you do, it always seemed that the other team scored. Well, now they made some changes that they try to, it looks like if you're in the right position, then that's gonna be a lot of this year's game. Right? If you're in the right position, that's where you wanna be. And the other, one of the bigger things that they added is they updated the puck carrier speed. Now what this means, don't get all crazy, is what they say in the video is the fast players are going to be fast. The slower players are going to be slower. So if you have McDavid and you're leading up the rush, he's going to play with speed. But if you had a guy like Zidane Char or something skating up the ice, and I always use him as an example because he's old and slow. But if he was to carry the puck up the ice, he's in, he should feel significantly slower than if you had McDavid. Or if you had a fast defenseman like like Cal McCarr or someone like that, where you can fly up and down the ice like McDavid can on offense. So hopefully this will be better that your faster players that should be fast, that have those good, you know, fast speeding stats should be fast. So hopefully that helps as far as the pace of play goes and everyone just doesn't use all the fastest player in the league because then that's going to be kind of stupid. And that's kind of the last thing that they went over in this video. They said there's going to be more upcoming here in September. Well, it's September, what, 9th, 10th, something like that. And we're still waiting on that one. So, of course, the next time something else comes out that's really interesting that I kind of want to cover, we'll make sure to cover it here on the channel. But that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy, hit that like button down below. Let me know of your thoughts and comments around these new, I guess, five or six big changes down in the comment sections below and if you haven't yet or if you're brand new here make sure to subscribe turn those post notifications on so you never miss an upload and don't forget you can always change your mind later but with all that being said guys we'll see you in the next one